Before we continue with this clip, this video has been brought to you by GoFiber. These are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. So how about dutasteride? So we know that dutasteride is being prescribed for, for patients who, who stopped seeing uh, the same protection from finasteride or who are never really responding to finasteride to be begin with. And yes, there are also some people like that. And in that case, they, they get prescription for dutasteride to, to inhibit more of the THD. So uh, I know you have tried it and you tried to do this mm -hmm. at, at the right time when finasteride mm -hmm. didn't seem to work a, a, as much anymore. But what happened? Can you share a little bit about this? Experience. Of course. So, uh, first of all, there is a reason why you will struggle to find a doctor to prescribe a young, healthy male to Tastrad. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So, the Tastrad works. Of course, it works, and it works better than Finasteride. And um, I got a, I got a boost on it. I sure did. But for how long? Uh, I used it for six months and I mean my hair boosted works fast huh it does work fast yeah. like it, it, it was <coughs> was great because I mean I could have I could have any style I, it was much thicker than this this was a year ago by the way and the texture changed it could have a hold a pompadour no product I mean I never use product I have no product in it now mm. but the point is it was ev it, it worked it was even better however I had never experienced a side effect on finasteride and I went on to detastride expecting the exact same thing I had not even considered side effects mm. and I was shocked that within a very quick space of time I experienced side effects on the drug now it wasn't related to performance issues mm -hmm. uh, it was more related to pain and mm -hmm. a feeling of then eventually numbness um, testicular numbness pelvic mm. floor mm. didn't feel the same no. that, that, it was weird and that's whatever, wild whatever pathway this drug goes I yeah. don't know it, 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 it's different if finasteride obviously it's having different effects um, in terms of nerves in that area it must be and knowing what I know I didn't stop mm. so I kept taking the drug and they went away mm. but that never sat right with me that bothered me. So they went away after about three months. And I kept taking the drug. Things improved. Mm. And I'm only taking the detastride once a week at this stage. But it never sat right with me. And I had a conversation with myself about balance and when is enough enough. Mm. And do you really want to be... I know there's an end point. I know you can't inhibit everything everything and it'll it'll still not be perfect do I really want to be inhibiting my dihydrotestosterone to what will happen when you take this drug and I thought no because again I don't understand why there's a culture that DHT is redundant that it's mm. useless this makes absolutely no sense we have this for a reason if it was redundant mother nature we would evolve to not have it post puberty. Yeah, you stop making it after twenty five. Exactly. I yeah. mean, it's a, it's a sex hormone. It's there for a reason. It goes towards. And studies are all there. People can just read them if they want. Improve cognitive function, memory helps towards improved um, heart function as well. Improve bone density, regulation of blood sugars. DHT is not useless. Sex performance very important. So I um, stopped it, and. I did go through a bit of a shed from doing that. Mm, for sure. I did. And when I say some of a shed, it, it, it was quite significant. And it's still growing back now. So I, I should hope for it to get a little bit thicker in the coming months. The half-life of detastride is, is rather long. Yeah, yeah. It stays in your system a long time. And I think it's about five months for when it um, really leaves your system fully. Uh, I need to double-check that. But that's when I experienced the shed. And... It, it was alarming uh, I wish I never went on that drug I, I don't like talking about it because um, you know it 
it, it kind of encourages other people to do it. Uh, I should never put any videos online showing my benefits from the drug because I, I, a lot of people have taken that drug because of those videos. And I don't feel good about that um, because, you know, young men shouldn't be inhibiting their DHT to these levels. It's really not good. They're, they're looking for a silver bullet. They're looking for a cure. And they think that if they inhibit their DHT as much as possible that their hair loss will just go away. And also, you, you haven't been taking it like every day, right? No. So the the side effects that you got was as a result of taking it was one a week. Also, it it shows how how important it is Precisely. for for the thickening. Yeah, yeah. It's just by taking yeah, it once yeah, a yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. My my, I have a hair restoration um, physician in Ireland who prescribed me my medicines mm. for hair loss. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't prescribe this to me. He wouldn't. He refused. So what was the reason? Um, Too young. Kind of the stuff I was saying, echoing that, and especially sperm count. Mm. He didn't want this done. Yes, and 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 the main thing was he said. Why would you inhibit this? You need it. <laughs> and I didn't yeah. really, you know, I put too much emphasis on hair. So my GP prescribed it. And, you know, my, my hair restoration physician in Ireland, he, he, does, he doesn't do my surgeries, just medicine. Um, he was, uh, you know, not surprised at these things. Hmm. And when I got off of the drug, he was delighted that I made that decision. You know, one person can can be a big proponent of uh, Dutast, right? But simply because he never had any of these things, yeah. you know, and that can go for finasteride or alminoxyl mm -hmm. and all these things. So you always need oh, to yeah. to watch guys who are very good responders, but also guys who have got side effects to this. Yeah, yeah. And then you you're probably making a well informed decision as to take it. Of course, consulting with your doctor, but then you you get a picture, and that's mm. hopefully what we are trying to do with this. Yeah. Mm. they're only focusing on hair, though, so they might yeah. not have had any side effects correct but what they're not seeing is again what's happening at a biological level when you're inhibiting dihydrotestosterone what they're not seeing that's yeah. the problem yeah and they're not considering that because they're just focused on hair i mean you you've met me now you know me you know how obsessive i am with hair the fact that i'm willing to not make this even better and i could by being on the test right i think says something yeah, you, you have to reach balance. Yeah, well, first of all, most people wouldn't tell the difference, anyways. Oh, no, yeah, but, but for you, I it's could make it better. You could do it, yeah, for your own, yeah. you know, feeling better about yeah. it and all that. No, not worth it. You, 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 as as you start going on through hair restoration, it, it takes many years. But I, I think you, I think you, people, you know, eventually mature and yep. adjust their priorities. So. It's it's whenever I have a consultation with with a client who is forty plus, he's like, listen, Matt, I don't want to have this model hairline anymore. They they exactly is that mature result yeah. of maturation yeah. and and not being yeah. uh, you know something that that is just unrealistic for for yeah. for them yeah. anymore. We need to be pragmatic and balanced. Yeah. But I do see guys in their 20s probably risking the most because they are the healthiest, so they mm -hmm. could tolerate many things. They have high T levels, so they are kind mm -hmm. of aggressive and trying to pursue it full on and trying to experiment with many substances. And, and I certainly tried also uh, mm -hmm. things things that were, of course, not approved and, mm -hmm. I, uh, and I had big hopes, but uh, they eventually did not work the, the, the same as the approved finasteride, for example. And, um, and, and going back to like the question like what was the best medication that I have ever used that, you know, saved and or maybe thickened my hair the best and kept it was finasteride as well. And uh, even when I added oral minoxidil, I, I didn't didn't feel I didn't feel a, a, as big of a additional boost from it uh, as compared to when I added finasteride for the first time. And, and that also explains why everybody should start first with finasteride, see how it works, right? And see what you get from it and then add stimulants if you feel like you need it even. Mm -hmm. Some people don't. Some people take finasteride and they, they might be okay because the hair is already quite good. So.